Hello and Namaste. I'm Suresh Kunal. Welcome to this video session. Uh, today I'm going to discuss about the question paper of uh, Computer Operator Dairy Development Corporation and exam was conducted by Public Service Commission on 2075-26. Apart from this discussion, I'm going to give you a link to download the file which contains the solution of this question paper. I have got an announcement also. We have got fundamentals fundamentalsmcq.com. We have got this site also where you can find the uh, correct answers and explanation to the uh, most uh, frequently being asked questions, uh, multiple choice questions. And at the top, you can find a button to submit your question. If you want to ask any question, any multiple choice question that's related to the uh, fundamentals of computers or the operating systems uh, that covers the DOS and Windows. And uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding the um, MS Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, uh, web page designing, HTML, or computer networking, you can ask uh, your question about these topics by filling up this form. So just type your question here or paste it and the first option, second option, third option and fourth option. Provide these four options that you got in your question and when you have done, fill in your personal information and submit this question. So I'll get this question and publish the question with the correct answer and explanation on the on this website like this the background of the word file you can find the options here and the correct answer which one should be the correct answer of that question and the explanation why why the particular answer is the correct answer you can read it over here so this way you can ask question and I will answer and explain for that it will be easier if you submit your question from this button and fill in these fields to send your questions up to me. Also, you are most welcome to answer any of these questions. There's a comment box at the bottom. You write your opinions here and then submit it. Post your comment. Well, there's an, an announcement about a new website uh, to help you to solve a particular question individual questions okay so after this uh, let's proceed towards the question paper of 2075-26 examination uh, of dairy development corporation i've got this foxit reader to open the file it's a kind of nice handy application to open your pdf files and jpg files let me open the first one the 01 jpg okay here is a question paper of uh, dairy development corporation which is called dukda vikasanstan in nepal the exam was conducted by public service commission on 2075 to 06 this is the question paper key a uh, somebody sent me this question through the facebook messenger and i'm going to uh, answer this question today it contains 50 questions one marks each so there are 50 questions, 50 marks. Let's proceed towards the first question. A term associated with the comparison of processing speeds of different computer system. Like there are different computer systems and you need to compare the processing speed. So the processing speed is compared in MIPS, that is millions of instructions per second. So this is the correct unit to measure the processing speed. Option A is the correct answer. Question number two, which of the following memories has the shortest, ex shortest access time? So when it says shortest access time, that means the fastest memory. And we have got the options cache memory, uh, magnetic bubble memory, magnetic core memory, and RAM. So this magnetic core memory and magnetic bubble memory are the magnetic uh, memory, magnetic storage uh, technique they use and magnetic uh, technique is much less much uh, slower than the silicon memory ram is silicon memory and cache is also the chip memory silicon chips memory 
and ra uh, between this RAM and cache, uh, cache is always faster than the uh, primary memory because the cache memory is a special uh, area in RAM or it might be there in the processor also. A high speed memory that is placed between the CPU and uh, main memory so that the speed of CPU could be cope up with the help of this cache memory. So cache is the correct answer among these four. Question number three, a perforated paper used as input or output media is known as, it had to be or, uh, it's written there off, but that's the clerical error. Uh, perforated paper used as input or output media is known as uh, paper tapes, magnetic tapes, punch card, uh, punched paper tapes, and card punch. The option B is not correct answer because magnetic tapes are the cassettes and cartridges and they are not the paper. Uh, they use the lima or the plastic ribbons. A uh, card punch is the action to create holes in the card. So option D is also not correct. B and D are boycott. And in between option A and option C, paper tape and punch paper tapes, uh, both of these appear to be correct. Uh, but uh, paper tapes is in, in more general. The paper tapes is more general than the punched paper tapes. So option A, paper tapes is the correct answer. Question number four, the analog computer deals directly with numbers or codes? No, digital computers deals with numbers and codes. So option A is not correct. Option B, measured values of continuous physical magnitude. Yes, correct. C, signals in the form of zero or one is of the digital, not for the analog. And these signals in the discrete values from 0 to 9, that's also digital. When the values or the signals are discrete, uh, it's the uh, digital computer. When they are continuous uh, and physical, then that is the analog. So option B is the correct answer for this question. Okay, question number five. Which of the following malicious program do not replicate automatically? And we have got four options, Trojan horse, virus, worm, and zombie okay among these four what you need to uh, understand is that they have special characteristics like trojan horses they appear to be very useful application but in fact they are malicious viruses they are attached with the application software and when you run any application run the infected application then along with that application, virus loads and executes. If you do not start that application, virus cannot load and virus cannot execute. So for the viruses to start its nasty tasks or to replicate or whatever it is destined to, user intervention is required. User needs to start, initiate, or user needs to load it. Though user do not know that it's a virus, but the user intervention is required. Virus automatically cannot load itself and do anything. In case of worm, human intervention is not required. Human instructions is not required for the worm. They can replicate by themselves. They can increase in number by themselves and cover whatever the storage space it has got or the tra network traffic, uh, whatever the bandwidth it can occupy all of it so worm replicates by automatic so and zombie is not the kind of the thing to replicate uh, automatically so among these four options virus is the kind of malicious program that needs user instruction or user action uh, to replicate so option b is the correct answer For question number six, why drop caps are used in document? Well, it's a question from MS Word. The options given are to drop all the capital letters, which is not correct. We never drop all the capital letters in a document. To automatically begin each paragraph with a capital letter. Uh, when you apply drop cap, it doesn't automate for every capital letter of uh, every paragraph. It doesn't automate for that. So option B is not correct. 
to begin a paragraph with a large dropped initial capital letter yes this can be the correct answer and none of the above is option d yeah so option c is the correct answer We use drop caps in a document so that our paragraph begins with a large dropped initial capital letter. Option C is correct for question number 6. Question number 7. Which of the following is valid minimum and maximum zoom sizes in MS Office? For the applications of MS Office, the zoom sizes, you can zoom in minimum 10%, you cannot go below 10%. And maximum you can zoom up to 500%. Like it's asking about, let me start the MS Word. Insert some text here. Okay, this zoom right now it is 110%. Is when you drag it down, it can come up to 10%. Is the minimum. And when you increase the zoom, when you zoom it. You can go maximum up to 500 so here zoom 10 percent to 500 percent or if you go to the view and then zoom you have got the options to zoom up to 500 you can decrease it but if you increase go on increasing after 500 you cannot increase so 500 is the maximum uh, zoom size and 10 is the minimum zoom size if you type your five percent is and click OK, so it says the number must be between 10 and 500. So the correct answer of question number seven is option C. Question number eight. When you press Ctrl U, it will underline the previously deleted text option b undo the last changes option c underline the document name and option d underline the selected text when you press ctrl u so if you have selected some text in your document for example let me sorry for example let me select this text and i press ctrl u the selected text is, uh, is underlined but the name of the document on the title bar is not underlined. Similarly, it cannot undo the last changes, nor it can undelete the previously deleted text. If you have deleted anything from here, like cut and control U, it doesn't un undelete. So only the option uh, D is the correct answer for this question. Control U. In question number nine, which feature do we use to create a newspaper-like document? So you have a document; it should go like a newspaper. That means lots of uh, columns, titles, etc. So columns. The major distinction of the newspaper document type is the columns. Here, go to the layout. And go to columns so from here you can select newspaper style columns okay that was question number nine now let me load the question number ten this is the second page of the same question same examination question number ten word is present to user word is present to user standard 8.5 by 11 inch paper with margins it means the default setting when you open word uh, word presents you with a standard uh, letter size paper that is 8.5 by 11 inch and the default margin setting is 1.25 inches to the left and right and 1 inches at the top and bottom so option C is the correct answer but it depends upon the version of MS Word. Uh, it's not a very good question for the exams though. It has already been asked. Well, the default setting depends upon the version of MS Word you are using. And this question appears to be from the Word 2003. 
which uh, had this 1.25 inches left and right and one inches on top and bottom and default setting for the uh, margins in page setup okay question number 11 Question number 11. What's the shortcut key for superscript the selected text? Control plus equals to subscript. Control minus control shift equals to. Yeah, this one is the correct answer. Which will superscript your text. And control plus shift plus dash. No, it doesn't superscript. So option C is the correct answer for question number 11. Let's go to question number 12. Which file starts MS Word? Word exe, win word exe, ms word exe, and word 2003. The correct answer is win word exe. It means in your run dialog box, when you type win word exe, press enter, it will start your ms word application. So winword.exe is the starting file for MS Word. Similarly, excel.exe is for the MS Excel. For PowerPoint, we have got PowerPNT. For PowerPoint, we have got PowerPNT.exe to start a PowerPoint application. Okay. Well, that's the question number 12. Option B is the correct answer. And in question number 13, which of the following is not a type of tab stop? Option A, bar, option B, decimal, option C, point, and option D, left. Among these four uh, options, bar tab is there, decimal tab is also there, left is there, but there's no point. So option C is the correct answer. This point is the correct answer because in MS Word, let me start the application. Look at the tab stop dialog box, left tab, center tab, right tab, decimal tab, bar tab, and first line indent, right indent, and then the same. So we have got other, but there's no point tab in the tab stop. Or let's look at the tabs dialog box. We have got left tab, center tab, right tab, decimal tab, and bar tab, but we don't have point tab. That's why the question number 13, the correct answer is option C. In the case of question number 14, what is the shortcut key to open phone dialog box? You can press Ctrl F to find, Alt Ctrl F, I don't remember, Ctrl D is the shortcut key to open the font dialog box Control shift d look at here like if it is we have got some text in our document and i want to change the font of this selected text so i can press Control and d to open the font dialog box from where i can make the required changes okay so my selected text became bold the correct answer is Control D to open the font dialog box. Now let's move towards question number 15. By default, on which page the header or footer is printed? It's a bit of a silly kind of question. If you know a little bit about the header and footer, or if you if you just even if you just know the definition of header and footer, then you very easily know that the headers and footers are printed on every page of a document though you can use a different header and footer on first page you can use different header and footer on the even page on the odd page but headers and footers uh, they are printed on every page question number 16 how ms word responds to repeated words that means if you are typing and you repeat the same word two times then how ms word will respond Option A, by red wavy underline re under repeated word. Option B, by green wavy line under repeated word. Option C, by blue wavy line under repeated word. Option D, by red dotted line under repeated word. When you repeat a word, it will underline, it will respond 
with a red wavy line for that repeated word. For example, I am typing, sorry, spelling error, typing, typing this text. Look at the spelling, typing, T-Y-P-I in the typing. The spelling is not wrong, but there's a red wavy underline. So it just indicates that the word is repeating. Right click the red, uh, right click that particular word and you can choose delete repeated word. If you, if this is a mistake and if this is error, then you can just choose this to correct it. So red wavy line under the repeated word. Option A is the correct answer of question number 16. Now number 17. The text wrap feature in word processing allows to type over text, option A. Option B, automatically moves to next line. Option C, allows to make, make text attractive. Option D, increase the attractiveness of the text. Option C and option D both mean the same thing and which is not related to text wrap in any way. It's the text wrap is not a formatting uh, feature. So option C and D is not correct. Now, option A allows to type over text and option B automatically moves to the next line. In word processing applications, uh, when you are typing something and reach up to the end, reach to the right margin, then the cursor will jump to the next line automatically and continue typing from there. This is the word wrapping feature, word wrap. The same thing you can find in the notepad also. In notepad, if this is the width of your window, I'm entering some text to demonstrate the word wrap feature in word processing applications here in notepad when i type you can see the cursor did not jump to the next line but instead it keeps on going to the right so when our window size was only this much the text keeps on going on the format menu we have got an option to enable or disable word wrap in notepad if you enable the word wrap option you can see when it reaches to the right or when it reaches to the end then it it automatically jumps to the next line on and continue flowing text from that point so this is word wrap this is by default turned on on the word processing applications which is that's why for the question number 17 option b would be the correct answer moving to the next line is known as word wrapping text wrap or word wrap Allows you to type over text is type over mode. You press the F8 key on your keyboard and start typing. It will type over the existing text. Uh, question number 18. How to display updatable current date in MS Excel? So you can type equals to date. It's a function to enter uh, date in Excel sheet. Equals to today is a function to enter current date in Excel. Equals to now is used to enter the current data and time in the sheet. Control plus semicolon inserts the date, today's date, but it's not updatable. Whereas the today, every day when it will uh, update itself according to the calendar. So equals to today is the correct answer for question number 18. Question number 19, grid lines. Option A, may be turned off for display but turned on for printing. Option B, may be turned on or off for printing. Option C, may be turned off for display and printing. Option D, all of above. Yeah, the grid lines in MS Excel or might be the uh, table in MS Word also. They can be turned off. For display and printing off on the display or on on the display off on the printing or on on the printing 
it can be done anything so this all of the above i guess is a correct answer question number 20 in ms excel current cell address is displayed in formula bar name box status bar none of the above the correct answer is name box in excel we have got a name box to the left hand side of the formula bar here we have got the formula bar and on the left most part we have got a name box so it displays the uh, cell address of your current cell or where your cell point is like right now it's on the f8 cell and you can see f8 written there on the name box your formula bar doesn't display the current cell address and the name of the cell nor your status bar nor on the title bar so the current cell address to learn where the current cell address is positioned you need to look at the name box so let me mark this answer name box as the correct answer question number 21 which function will calculate the number of work days between 6 9 2004 and 8 12 2004 we have got option a work day b date option c network day and the all of above because date is not a function to calculate the number of days between the date ranges date it simply accepts the date string converts into the date format and pastes into excel worksheet that means when you use a date like here i can write equals to sorry i can write it equals to date and inside here 2018 april 23rd so this was a date string given there it will be converted into the date format and inserted into the actual worksheet so or the function of date fun date uh, function the task of date function is just this much it doesn't count anything so option b is not correct when option b is not correct option d all of above is also not correct now our confusion lies only between the work day option a and network days option c so between these two options between these two functions in excel you need to understand that the function of network days is to calculate the number of days while the function of work day is to find the date for example you are given the starting date from this date after 30 working days what will be the, the date so for this condition you need to use the function workday if this is your requirement you are you know the starting day and you know the how many working days it's known to you and needs to find what will be the date after this 30 working days you can use workday function but if you know that this is the starting day 2018-423 this is the starting day and this is the ending day like 2018 and December 13 this is the ending day and you need to know now you need to find how many days you need to find here how many days will it be how many working days not only the days but how many working days we will have in between these two dates then you should use network day so if you remember this the function of these two functions the task of these two functions then you will not confuse in this question anymore so when we are given two date ranges obviously the correct answer will be network days if we were given the starting day and number of working days and we were asked to find the next date what will be the date at that time we would have choose this work day and okay now proceed towards the question number 22 when integrating word and excel word is usually the server client source or none of above when you integrate word and excel excel is a spreadsheet application it's good for the database maintaining lists and word is word processing application it's good for document designing document creation when you integrate these two obviously you will store data inside excel and you will use the design 
in MS Word. So Excel will serve the data and Word will consume it. In that scenario, Excel will be the server, Word will be the client. Excel will be the source for data and Word will be the target. So option B, client is the correct answer. Okay, question number 23, which of the following contains the name of each record on the chart? Which of the following contains the name of each record on the chart? So there is on the chart and there are the records and we are given options cell, title, axis, legend. In uh, Excel chart, there is no cell. Title is a chart title that tells about the whole chart what it is about. Axis, we have got x-axis and y-axis that tells uh, the value scale for the bar or line that reaches up to and lessened is the correct answer which tells that this particular record this particular bar belongs to the male this is for female or this bar or this color this color represents for the uh, in uh, the population this color so this way the symbols or colors or the patterns what they mean in chart so it's being expressed by lesson that's why the answer of question 23 would be option d number 24 what is the shortcut key to replace a data with another in sheet so you need to replace the data to replace we have got control f fine control h is replace when you press Ctrl H, it will open the Find dialog box with Replace at the front. For example, when you press Ctrl and H, it will open the Find and Replace dialog box with the Replace tab at the front. Ctrl F, it opens the navigation pan in Word 2016, but in case of Word 2013, 2003 and earlier versions, it opens the, it opens, Ctrl F opens the Find and Replace dialog box with the find tab at the front and control G would open with the go to tab at the front. Yeah, control G opens with go to at the front, control H for the replace and control F for the find. Okay, control H is the correct answer for question number 24. Now let me open the third page of the question paper. Here's the question number 25. Which of the following formula will Excel not be able to calculate? We are given four options. Option A equals to sum purchase minus A4. That means this formula will add the values of purchase, get a number, and that from that number, the value in A4 will be subtracted. So option A is quite fine, perfect, correct uh, formula, valid formula. Option B equals to sum A1 is to A5 asterisk 0 0.6. It will calculate the sum of sales, the values in the sales from A1 to A5 and on for that total, it will multiply by 0 0.6. So it will calculate the 60% of that total number. Option B, the formula is absolutely valid, correct? Option C, equals sum of A1 is to A5 and divided by 10 minus 10 here. The sum of A1 to A5 is correct. Okay, no problem. But dividing by 10 minus 10 will result to 0. And division by 0 is not allowed because it will cause the infinite value. So option C should be the correct answer. Option D equals to sum A1 to A5 minus 10 is perfectly valid. So the correct answer is option C. In actual, if you type equals to uh, 35 divided by 0 it would produce the sharp div slash 0 error that means division by 0 error it's not allowed in actual but you can use purchase sum of purchase minus a4 for example here is some number and I named this range as purchase Okay, the name of this range is purchase. So if I type equals to sum of purchase, it will produce the sum of these numbers in the in this range. So this sum 
can be divided by any other number or subtracted by the A4 number you can do it it's perfectly valid for option A is quite fine but option C only the problem is that it happened to be deleted by uh, divided by zero which is not allowed okay proceed towards question number 26 the cell reference for a range of cells that starts in cell c1 and goes over to column h down to row 10 so from c1 to h10 the way you can write the reference is c1 to h10 this is the correct answer 27 concatenation of text can be done by using the ampersand symbol this is the concatenation symbol like here in excel we have got uh, Suresh and another cell Kanal. If I write here equals to Suresh ampersand Kanal, I get a new string Suresh Kanal on the same uh, same cell, single cell. So this is the concatenated string. I combined the two strings Suresh and Kanal into a single string Suresh Kanal. So this ampersand operator, this operator is a concatenation operator. Uh, go back to the next question, number 28. What function displays row data in a column or column data in a row? So it's obviously the transpose. Transpose, by transposing, you can convert rows into columns and columns into rows. For example, this is a column data. The in one column it has got uh, one two three four one two three, yeah it has got four rows and one column so this data i copy it and over here came to the paste spatial and asked to transpose this value mark the transpose checkbox click ok the same values will be here but this time it's a row wise it's horizontal so vertical data into horizontal and horizontal data into vertical. So converting this way is known as transpose. So option C is the correct answer for question number 28. Question number 29. What term describes explanatory text attached to a cell? Option A. Context. B. Call out. C. Comment. And D. Dialogue. The term to describe explanatory text attached to a cell is a comment. In Excel, we have got we can insert like for this text or for this data for this cell, I want to insert some explanatory text. Like in this cell, I inserted a comment. This is the name of the instructor. So this is explanatory a text for this particular data. And it's inter inserted as a comment. And that's why for the question number 29, the correct answer is option C. Proceed towards question number 30. When a formatted number doesn't fit within a cell, it displays, the market displays is shaft div slash zero is displayed when your formula contains division by zero error so div slash zero so if div at the rate none of the above other options are not valid so option a is the only correct answer if you want to see like uh, we have got some uh, formatted numbers for example if this was a number it's this is unformatted it didn't fit within the width so it's displayed as the scientific notation but if you format this number, like you applied a currency format. Now here the number is formatted in currency format. And if your column width doesn't fit for the number, it will be displayed in the shaft. That's why the option A is the correct answer for question number 30. Question number 31. Uh, what refers to the way things are arranged on a slide in PowerPoint
in PowerPoint, you can ask the design for the for your slide by going to the design and choose your favorite design. But you also have layout which tells which object will be where. What will be the layout of this slide? Like here I change the layout and now my title is here and two boxes are at the bottom. So design, slide design and slide layout are different thing. The slide layout refers to the way things are arranged on a slide. That's the most suitable one. So slide layout is the correct answer. Slide transition is the effect when one slide moves away and next slide enters in. And rehearse timing is running slide show recording the time for every slide so as to set the specified time for that slide automatically. Only option B is correct for 31. Okay, 32. What is the shortcut key to start presentation from the current slide? If you need to resume the slide show, you can press Shift F5. F5 key to start the show and Shift F4, F5 to resume the show if it was stopped somewhere. 33. How to insert tables in a slide? You can insert tables in a slide by going to insert table from the insert menu or you can click on the insert table content panel also. Like in the uh, in your slide on the content panel, you can click on the insert table button. From here also, you can insert the tables on your slide or you can go to the uh, insert and then table and from here also you can insert the table in your slide. So that's why both A and B are the correct answer. This will be the correct answer for question number 33. Question number 34, which command brings you to the first slide in your presentation? It's a very obviously control plus home. In most of the application control home to go to the very beginning of the file and control in to go to the very end of the file. So in PowerPoint also you can press Control Home to go to the first slide and Control N to go to the last slide. Question number 35, which of the following section doesn't list a slide layout? Titles, lists, charts, animation. Uh, which of the following section doesn't exist in a slide layout? In slide layout we have got titles, we have got lists, we have got charts also. But animation is not a slide object, it's not a, a component of a slide, it's an effect applied to the slide objects. So this is the correct answer, option D doesn't exist in the slide layout. Question number 36, a computer on the internet are identified by email addresses, street address, IP address, none of above. Street addresses is for the physical world. Your office building can be identified with the street address. Email addresses is uh, it's for, it's to identify. It's not to identify. It's just to send the uh, email to a specific person. IP addresses or the network addresses. This is the address used to identify a computer or a device on the internet. Number 37. Which of the following is a geographical network classification? Geographical network classification, uh, client, server, peer-to-peer -peer are the type of networks. A client server network or peer-to-peer -peer network. Client computer, server computer and peer-to-peer -peer kind of network. But when is a type of network based upon the geographical area it covers? It's a wide area network, covers the uh, city or a country, etc. Question number 38, which, of the, which is the connector of coaxial cable? If you are using coaxial cable for your networking, you cannot use RJ45. This is the connector for uh, UTP or STP cable, the network cables. Uh, you need to use BNC connector. BNC it's for the coaxial cable. The coaxial cables are the that we use in our home uh, for TV, uh, in the TV channels, 
the cable TV, we use the, the cable, coaxial cable, and the connector used for that is BNC. I can show you how the BNC connector looks like. And you can see these BNC connectors displayed. Now let's go to images to find a better image to make it clearer for you. Okay, I'm sure you have seen these connectors already. Like this connector we use on the uh, television channels. So these are the BNC connectors. Okay, let's go back to the question. Question number 39, Bluetooth is the wireless technology for local area network, personal area network, both A and B, none of and Bluetooth cannot be used for the lens. It's too small. The area it can cover is too small. So it's good only for personal area network or PAN. Uh, network around a person is a personal area network. Like you have got your laptop with you, uh, you know, smartphone, and your uh, the Bluetooth uh, uh, speakers on your ear, ear, or the gear on your hand, the smart smart watch. So the network of these devices around a person is known as a personal area network, and Bluetooth is good only for that. Question number forty: Which is the most important piece of information needed to connect to a specific wireless network? Okay you uh, went to some new place you got some wireless network so what do you need at first to connect to a wireless network is ssid this network id once you have this ssid then you can connect to the network and then supply password for the authentication to be allow uh, to be able to uh, use internet Okay, let me load the last page of this question paper. The fourth page. And here is the question number 41. Which of the following topologies share a single channel on all stations can receive and transmit? Ring, bus, tree, and star. Among these topologies, Bus is the kind of topology that uses a central channel or the trunk and all the computers are connected, all the computers, all the network devices, they are connected to this trunk which is known as a bus and all of them share this common communication channel. So bus is the correct answer for question number 41. Question number 42, DSTP is the abbreviation of Dynamic Host Control Protocol, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, Dynamic Hyper Control Protocol, and Dynamic Hyper Configuration Protocol. Okay, Dynamic Host Control Protocol is the correct full form of DHCP. Uh, which is the uh, DHCP server. If you have in your network, then that DHCP server will provide the IP addresses uh, for the computers and devices in the network so that you don't need to configure the static IP for all each and every uh, devices in your network. Question number 43, HTML documents are saved in special binary format? No. Machine language codes? No. ASCII text? Yes. This is the correct answer. This ASCII text is a clear text, plain text format. So the HTML documents are also saved in ASCII text. You can just open them using your notepad. Notepad can very easily open those text files, those HTML documents. So option C is the correct answer. Question number 44. Internet was originally a project of NASA, no NSF, ARPA. It was started by ARPA, which afterwards became the global and public and became internet. Read a little bit the history about internet for that question number 44. Question number 45. Email address is made up of single part, two parts, three parts and four parts. There's a little bit of confusion between the two parts and three parts, but I go for uh, the option B, two parts. The first part, local part or the username like Suresh and then the second part, the domain name 
m6h.com. So suresh at m6h.com will be the email address. This way. Here, this first part is the local part, the first part, and this is the second part, the domain part. There are two parts in an email address. As somebody refer this as the third part, the add, but this is not a part of an email address. This is just a delimiter, delimiter uh, that just separates the user from the domain. That's why I go for the uh, two paths only as the uh, part of email addresses. 46, the word abacus is derived from abax, a word from Latin language, Greek language, Sanskrit language, and ancient Egypt. Abacus is derived from abacus in Latin language, but that abacus in Latin was derived from abax in Greek language. And we are given abax here, so the correct answer will be Greek. Number 47, second generation computers are, oh, there are a lot of lists of computers, but we recognize IBM 1401 was the first computer to enter into Nepal and it was the second generation computer. So it will be safe to mark option C as the correct answer for question number 47. Second generation computers are IBM 1401, CDC 6600, IBM 7030, etc. Question number 48. The earliest calculating device is clock, abacus, difference engine, none of above. Among these options, abacus is the earliest calculating device. Nobody knows when it was started, but it's believed that 2000 to 5000 years ago in ancient China or Egypt, it was invented. It was being used. Now question number 49, Babbage presented his dot 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 to the Royal Astronomical Society which was able to calculate polynomials. He had uh, completed designing and building the differential engine. He presented this difference engine to the Royal Society and got some funding for his further research. With that money, he started researching about the analytical engine. He finished designing the analytical engine, but it was never built. So, with that historical uh, background, we can say difference engine is the correct answer because Babbage did not uh, develop computer engine, nor the diesel engine, nor the petrol engine. Question number 50, chip is the common name for E or N transistor, register, integrated circuit, and semiconductor. So transistor chip, we don't call uh, the transistor chips. So register chips, no, but IC chips, integrated circuits, are often called chips. So the correct answer will be option C. Okay, this way we have answered the 50 questions from this question paper of uh, Dairy Development Corporation of 2075 to uh, 06. The exam was conducted on that day. Before ending this video, I'd like to give you the link to download the PDF file for this uh, question paper. You can type on your browser address bar https mcqsets.com and then slash ddc75. You type this address on your browser address bar, then press enter and see what happens. Okay, see you again in another video. Till then, bye bye.